Welcome to this RE Tech Talk Live about the EF Mount Elbas. My name is Fred, I work for RE in Munich and we are today here in the RE studio in Munich. I'm surrounded by a few colleagues who are either um, filming or producing or streaming that video. And also later on we will see a video insert that was reproduced by our colleague Sean Dooley from RE Australia. Um, and that, in that video he explains a lot about the EF Mount Elbas. Before we watch that video, I'm going to give you a brief overview about the lens mounts that we currently have for our large format camera system. And then we're going to watch the video and afterwards we're going to look at some physical differences in between mounts and I'm going to show you how to change a lens mount on your Alexa Mini LF. If you have any questions coming up during that seminar, you can already enter them on the right side in the text box. We will either answer them immediately or afterwards in a live Q&A session. Also, we just uploaded a fresh um, EF Mount Elbas product website, so that can be found in the camera section of our website. And now we're going to start with a little overview about the lens mounts that we have for the Alexa LF and the Alexa Mini LF. When we first introduced the Alexa LF in 2018, we started also, we also introduced the LPL lens mount. That LPL lens mount is compatible with the signature palm lenses and the signature zoom lenses that we just announced. Uh, it is also available with the Ari Rental DNA LF lenses and others. And we also have many, many third party companies that build lenses with an LPL lens mount. That LPL system is designed by Ari, but the specifications are open. So if any manufacturer would like to build LPL products, be that lenses or accessories and other optical um, products, they can contact us and they get the full specification of the LPL design. If you choose to shoot Panavision uh, or Vantage lenses on the Alexa LF or Alexa Mini LF, um, those rental houses build their own mounts. So those mounts are also available from the rental house. If you choose those lenses, if you choose to work with a rental house, they will also supply you with the correct mount for your Alexa LF and the Alexa Mini LF. If you decide to shoot your project with PL mount lenses, be they Super 35 lenses or also large format lenses, we recommend using the PL to LPL adapter. That PL to LPL adapter fits within an LPL lens mount that you have mounted on your Alexa Mini LF or on the Alexa Mini. And it gives you the same PL standard that you are used to, so you have the same flange depth. Um, but the illumination of that PL to LPL adapter in combination with the LPL lens mount is a little bit better in large format than the usual PL mount that we had. If you want to shoot EF mount lenses, which is a great choice, we have the right product for you just available next month. And we will hear a little bit more about this later, so I'm going to keep it short now. And if you decide to use Lights M0.8 lenses, we also have a mount, the Lights M mount, but we do not sell it, so we as ARRI do not sell it. Lights is, uh, is the distributor and manufacturer of that mount, and that mount is available for the Alexa Mini LF only, so there's no Lights M mount for the Alexa LF. Now we are looking into EF lenses. Um, the EF standard was um, designed and brought into the market by Canon in the late 1980s. And the basic idea or the original idea was that those lenses go with the new autofocus uh, still film photo cameras. Um, so EF stands for electrofocus. But that EF standard, so the, whole, the only the mechanical side of it, which is this one here, this is an EF lens mount, it's also been getting more and more popular in the Cinestar lens world. So this year, for example, is a Sigma 24 to 35 full frame lens that has an EF mount. And we call it Cinestyle because the, um, the focus ring, you can, you can um, adjust the focus from the outside and you have hard stops at the end. So here you can see at infinity I have a hard stop, but also at close focus I have a stop. And you have those gear rings outside. So these lenses work perfectly with the new EF mount Elbus because you can then connect the Elbus lens motors that we have to the Elbus connector and control that uh, lens manually. But you will get all the lens data if you have a, a lens data archive in use, for example. So that is very, the behavior is very similar to P 
FPL lenses or LPL lenses that are already being used on cinema cameras. But the original lens design or the idea of Canon um, for, the, for the still photo market is, uh, is a lens like this. So you have the same mechanical EF mount at the back. You can adjust the focal length. This is a zoom lens outside and you have hard stops there. You cannot access the iris from the outside but you can access the iris values from our camera or from our other LBUS devices, for example. But you cannot really use external lens motors with it since you don't have fixed end stops for the focus. You can see that here I'm turning the focus ring, but the value in, in here is at the end. So you cannot calibrate a lens motor to it. That is the basic difference of EF lenses that we make so far. And uh, this is just a preparation for the video that we are about to see. So Sean Dooley from Australia, our colleague, he got the EF mount for a few days already and he pre-recorded a video with some footage that he shot but also with a lot of information. So we're going to take a look at that next, so please play the video. Hey, I'm Sean from ARRI and this is our new interchangeable large format EF mount with LBUS. So we've had an EF mount for the Amira and for the Alexa Mini for some time now, but that original lens mount was only designed to work with the Super 35 size sensors that are in both of those cameras. If you take one and put it on the Mini LF, while it will mount and it will work and control some function of the lenses, you'll find that some lenses will vignette in the corners because that original lens mount had a small baffle in there which prevented external light from bouncing around. And that small baffle means that lenses with a large format size image circle won't be able to get light all the way to the corners of the large format sensor that you find in the Alexa Mini LF. So we've introduced a new lens mount which doesn't replace the old one completely. It's still a great match with the Amira and with the Alexa Mini, but we now have this new large format EF mount with LBUS for the Alexa Mini LF. To control the iris of EF stills lenses that don't normally have an iris ring, you can go from the home screen and press the EI button and then the iris button and then you can use the wheel on the back of the viewfinder to scroll up and down in full stops or one quarter stop increments. You can also select iris open and iris close to be user buttons that you could put on the camera or the viewfinder or any other device. If you want to have finer control than that, you can use the OCU1 and the master grips to control the iris in one tenth of a stop increments and more of that a bit later. So why an EF mount? Well, as of December 2018, Canon alone had produced more than 140 million lenses with an EF mount. You probably own some yourself or know someone who does. They're ubiquitous, they're really common, and so it makes sense for us to allow you to put those lenses onto the Alexa Mini LF, which has a very similar sensor size to the full frame photo standard. So most of those lenses will work really well with this camera. Now they're a lot cheaper than cinema lenses usually and of course they're not necessarily mechanically as nice and they might be designed with image artifacts that you won't necessarily see in still photography like focus breathing which you will never really see because you're only taking still images but on a, a cinema camera it would be really apparent so you've got to be careful about those kind of things and I've got to say they're not going to be as nice as signature primes but the idea is that if you are an owner operator who wants to purchase an Alexa Mini LF you'll probably get an LPL mount with your kit, which you can use to rent that full set of signature primes for a larger job. But if you're shooting smaller stuff or you're shooting cat videos at home, whatever it is, it means you can use your EF lenses or lenses that can be adapted to EF lenses on your Mini LF without having to have that massive investment also in cinema lenses. Now, the other nice thing with EF mount is that you can get some really specialty lenses that you can't really find in cinema style lenses. So for example, tilt shift lenses are going to be hard to find in PL or LPL. Um, we have uh, an ultra macro over here, so that will do a 5 to 1 magnification ratio, which um, is really close macro. Here's um, one of my eyeballs. You can get big sports lenses that do really long focal length ranges that you won't really be able to find in a cinema lens or that are going to be really big and heavy to use and you'll probably need an assistant. Whereas it's you know, reasonably comfortable to use some of the larger Canon EF sports lenses with a mini LF and get some really cool shots by yourself that you couldn't otherwise do. And of course here we have this utterly outrageous 8mm fisheye um, which is also going to be pretty hard to find in a cinema lens. So if you're after a specialty look this really opens up the possibilities of the type of lenses that you can use on your Alexa mini LF. 
It's also pretty interesting that Canon EF has one of the shortest flange depths of lens mounts that were designed for film SLRs. So that means that there are lots of other lenses that you can adapt quite easily to EF mount with a little mechanical adapter. So I have a Pentax Takamar 50mm f1.4 here, which is an M42 lens mount, and I just have here a little EF to M42 screw adapter. And by screwing this onto the lens, it will allow me to put it onto the EF mount inside the camera. And of course, any lens that was designed to cover full frame photo will just about cover large format on the Mini LF. There are lenses like Leica R lenses, obviously Pentax M42 and K mount. Um, there would be Carl Zeiss Jena lenses in the CY mount that would be adaptable to EF. There are lots and lots of options. So really, we're talking about hundreds of millions of lenses that you can use now with your Alexa Mini LF because of this new large format EF mount. The other key feature of our new EF lens mount is the addition of an LBUS port down here. Now LBUS is what we use to daisy chain out to a whole bunch of different LBUS devices like lens motors. So we have our C-Force Mini plus an RF. And we have L-Cubes, we have C-Finders, pan bar zooms, master grips, and the OCU-1. So I'm gonna demonstrate that for you now. I'm just gonna take off this fisheye as it's a little extreme for what we want. And I'm gonna put on this little 40mm Canon pancake I have here, which is normally quite a difficult lens to use because it's so small. Now you notice all I did there was rotate the lens in. I just connect the red dot to the red dot, twist the lock. It'll automatically calibrate that autofocus motor. And then I'm just gonna clamp this down here with our positive lock clamp ring that we have introduced for the EF mount. Now, that's of particular importance if you're using cinema style EF lenses so that it really makes sure that the lens is completely flat on the lens mount and that the flange depth is gonna be exactly 44 millimeters, which is what it is for EF lenses so that all your focus marks will line up. And if you have a stabilized lens like this Canon 200 to 400, the EF mount will power the stabilization as well. So you can get nice steady shots at really long focal lengths, which normally wouldn't work with a cine lens, right? There aren't very many stabilized cinema lenses that will certainly not ones that will cover large format. So now I'm just gonna run you through a bunch of different camera rigs for using EF lenses with an ARRI camera like the Alexa Mini LF. The Alexa Mini would operate in pretty much exactly the same way with the smaller sensor. Here I have a Canon c &E Cinema Prime. So these primes only come in EF mount, even though they're c &E, or cinema style lenses, sorry. But there are a bunch of other different cinema lenses like Schneider lenses or Compact Primes or Atlas Anamorphics, which also come with an EF mount. So if you own those, you can now use those with LBUS devices on the Mini LF. So here I have two C-Force Mini motors, which have a nice neat daisy chain of LBUS cables here. No, not many people know we also sell tiny right angle LBUS cables, which can be nice if you have motors rigged close to the floor, the cables won't dig into the floor. And that LBUS cable there is going into the new LBUS port on the bottom of the EF mount. I've made a lens data table inside the WCU4 for this lens, so I have full lens data control here. And that metadata is being saved inside the camera now. Because we're using the Alexa Mini LF as the motor controller and I've sent the lens data to the camera, the camera's controlling the motors. With every ProRes and ARRI RAW file, it's recording all the focus, iris, and the focal length position, which is great in post for VFX. And it means that you can also send that data out of the SDI port if you want to show it on a monitor, which again, handy for focus pullers and also for script supervisors and all sorts of different people on set who like to see that kind of data. Okay, so here's how I've rigged one of Canon's super telephoto lenses. This is the 200 to 400 F4 at the front here. And you have to be kind of creative when you rig these lenses as they don't really adhere to the standard mounting points for our cinema rod standards. So I'm running 19 mil rails. I've got an LS9 lens support here, which I flipped upside down and then flipped the screw upside down, put a little spacer in there, and I'm able to screw into this uh, lens support foot with the 3 8 inch hole that's there. At the back, I have my two master grips, which are running into the LBUS port at the front of the camera. I have a rocker version here controlling my iris, but you could also get another wheel like I have on the left-hand side for my focus, which would be wheels. So this would be kind of how you would traditionally run a broadcast style camera with a long lens like an OB camera or a news camera or a studio camera, something like that. Screen at the back, quite ergonomic. I'm very comfortable here. I have a great range of movement. Now you could also run this in more of a cinema style. So what I like to do in that case is run our new Hollywood handle, which I've made out of the HEX hex extensions. I have a bicycle grip, adapt, a bicycle grip adapter at the back here, um, BYO Sparkle Tassel, if you noticed that in the video before. 
and then OCU one up the front I would rig without the master grips and it's really quite a nice ergonomic way to operate the camera and you really feel kind of close in with it connected which I know a lot of operators like especially if you're doing high speed panning or anything like that. Alright that should just about do us. If you have any questions please leave them in the comments and we'll get to those at the end of the live stream. Thanks very much for watching and back to you Fred. Thanks Sean for this very great overview video. Uh, and we are very much looking forward to all the CAT videos you're about to shoot with EF lenses. Um, you mentioned some uh, differences in the physical design of the older um, EF lens mount for the Alexa Mini for Super 35 and the newer one with the Elbus, so we're going to take a look at that now. Here we have the new EF mount Elbus, and this is the Elbus connector we are talking about so much. Um, the cables that you can connect to this Elbus connector uh, they would face the right side, so the camera assistant side, which is nice, so you have easy access to it. Um, you can connect any LBUS device to it, so be that lens motors, uh, master grips, or OCU1s or L-cubes. And this mount is compatible with the Alexa Mini LF and the Alexa Mini. This locking ring here um, locks a lens down, so if you inserted a lens, you can then lock it, so you have a, a proper flange and uh, even heavier lenses sit tightly. If you want to remove the lens, you have to open uh, this mechanism first, then push the release button and take off the lens. Those four screws here in the corner are used to mount the mount to the camera. So the Alexa Mini LF, the Alexa Mini, they all have a very similar front end, so you can put that mount on there. This electrical interface in here and on the back over there transfers uh, control, meter data and power. So for example also the image stabilization is being powered through this. This mount is not only a mechanical mount that mounts a lens to a camera body, it is also an optical element. Um, there is no glass in there, um, but still we have to make sure that we prevent unwanted reflections in there because reflections uh, may limit the contrast and we want as much contrast as the lens can provide so we get nice images in the end. Um, so therefore the material in here in that so-called light baffle, uh, the material, the shape and the coating in that baffle is very important uh, so we don't have any reflections that we don't want. So this is the EF mount L bus and here I have the the F mount that we had before and that we still also have. And as you can see here, there is a size difference in the opening uh, since the existing EF mount without LBUS is only made for Super 35 uh, sensors, while the new one with LBUS is uh, capable of Super 35 and uh, large format sensors. So now that we've talked so much about that mount, um, you may want to know how to put it on the camera. So therefore I'm going to show you how to exchange a lens mount on an Alexa Mini LF but the same procedure also applies to the Alexa Mini. So first of all I'm showing you this now with a sensor facing upwards so you can clearly see it but usually we recommend that you have the camera sensor facing sidewards or even a little bit downwards because then you don't have so much dust that could enter the opening. And that's the first important note. Uh, before you start, you should make sure that you are in a clean environment and that also the gear that you are using, so the camera, the lens mount, and the other lens mount that you're putting on, as well as the tool are clean. Make sure your hands are clean, so if you just had a sandwich or gummy bears, you should wash them before you do that. And then you just take a 3 mil Allen key and then you can open those screws in the corner of the mount. I just moved those ears a little bit so I have access to all of those screws. Also, before you start, you should make sure that your camera is turned off and that there's no power supply connected. Now you can take off the LPL mount in that case and put on the EF mount. You don't have to rush, but 
should be kind of quick and don't make a break in the middle so that your sensor isn't exposed to the environment too long. Good, and that's about it. I'm going to take that camera to the front. In the camera manual of our cameras, we recommend that you, you, uh, that you check the flange depth after every lens mount change. But in most cases, there is actually not a big problem if you've changed the lens mount. So you, in most cases, there is no, no other adjustment needed to, to adjust the flange depth. And that's about it. And we go over to the uh, question parts of that session. Yeah, thank you, Fred. Um, one question came in, which was like, can I pull focus with an EF mount lens? Yes and no, we have to distinguish a little bit between the lenses. Um, I made the difference before, so if you have an EF mount lens, like a Sinistar lens, like this one that I showed you, where you can easily connect external lens motors to it, it's absolutely possible, yes, because it actually behaves like any PL, LPL lens that you've been using before. You have external lens motors, you control the lens, uh, you maybe have an LDA table and you get lens data that's being passed through to the camera, so everything's fine. If you have one of those still photo lenses, as I told you before, there are no fixed end stops for the focus values. So you can set the focus and you can set the iris, uh, but you cannot compare the performance of those internal motors, how they behave with an external motor. The external motors are more smooth, more accurate, you can repeat a move, a focus move, and you will end at the same, at the same distance. And you, we, you cannot really guarantee that for, that for those EF mount still photo lenses. And also, there are a few different generations of lenses, and every lens behaves differently. So it's a yes and a no. Yes for the Cinestyle ones, and a no wish for the EF still photo lenses. But having the right lenses, you know, you could use a WCU4, for example, and then you could pull focus. Yes, absolutely. You can use. The WCO4, the SXU1, the OCO1, the master grips, actually everything out of our ECS ecosystem that kind of speaks to the camera can speak with those, with those lenses. Okay. So obviously if you see the mount, there comes one question which goes like, why is the Albus connector on the bottom of the mount? Um, <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's a little bit hard to, to package those things, but we're pretty happy with the position it has because uh, you have easy access to it. Um, it fits all of the existing cameras and also future cameras. Okay, future cameras, that sounds good. <laughs> um, how can one calibrate external lens motors on a still photo lens? External lens motors on a still photo lens, that is the, uh, the part I already talked a little bit about. Since you don't have an end stop here, at the end of your focus scale, um, the lens motor, first of all, you would need a zip gear on here so you can connect the lens motor to it, which is possible. Um, but um, since you don't have an end stop, the, the external motor would just rotate endlessly and wouldn't find a position. So therefore, that is not possible. Okay. So I think one thing you made clear, the question was, uh, will the mount work with the Alexa Mini? Yes, it will. More in detail, is there anything that does not work with the Mini instead of the Mini LF? Um, first of all, you don't need any other software running on the camera to support that mount. And other than that, obviously you cannot shoot large format with it because it's a large format mount and because the Alexa Mini is a Super 35 camera. I can't think of any other limitations right now. Okay. So, and what you showed in our white box, you know, how to change, that you changed the mount in, in what, two minutes or something. This everybody can do, or this is not a job for area service. You can do that in the field, clean conditions, and yes. off you go. Absolutely. So, what you should make sure if you, if you can anticipate that at some point uh, a lens mount during shooting is being changed, you should, you should check them both in prep for, for the proper flange depth. Um, and then, as I said, we usually, or in the manual, we recommend to change the flange depth after every change of a lens mount, but in most cases that's fine. So if you're done in prep, you should be good. Okay. And basically everyone can, can do this, yes. There was also a question coming in about image quality. So we have 
no glass in the piece? There is no glass in that lens mount, correct. And we really took a lot of time to optimize uh, the stray light behavior in there to, be, to, to get the internal reflections under control. So we have tried many, many different coatings and shapes and sizes in the light baffle to make sure that it's a proper quality that you get there. Okay, so let's see what comes in next. So our colleague Mark Schippen-Müller from Berlin is helping here and answering a couple of things. Um, so somebody's asking about Alexa Mini and a dedicated EF2405, whether it would work. It would mount, for sure. Uh, the electronic functionality, I cannot guarantee. It would need to be tested, but I'm pretty positive. Okay, so let's wait a minute. Guys, any question out there? S something so more or? No, not in the moment, I think. Okay, so if any other questions come up, uh, we have the ARI forum uh, where you can post questions or also uh, after the live stream, there is an email address to our digital workflow solutions team, I believe. So if any questions should be left open, then please, please let us know. And otherwise, uh, thank you very much for, for watching. Thank you, team, for setting this up. Thank you, Sean, for pre-producing the video. And see you next time.